Well, this week scientists announced the results of what they describe as the world's largest study, which shows genetic links to uh, conditions like Parkinson's disease, ADHD, schizophrenia, bipolar and more. And joining me live is Louis Garcia Marin, a PhD candidate at QIMR Berghofer, who is the lead author on this paper. Thank you so much for joining us. So I believe this study involved around 189 people which looked at DNA data and brain MRI scans from 76,000 participants across 19 countries. So a significant study. What did it find and how significant is it? Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Um, as you just mentioned, this is the largest and most geographically diverse genetic study of human brain and skull size and its relationship with neuropsychiatric conditions. So we, we investigated the, the size of the brain of a specific structures in the deep brain and any relationship with, with neuropsychiatric disorders. So what we found is that the, the volume of our brain is associated with, with brain-related disorders or what we could call uh, neuropsychiatric disorders. Specifically, we observed that smaller brain volumes tend to be associated with a larger risk for ADHD, whereas larger brain volumes tend to be associated with a larger risk for Parkinson's disease. All right, so I guess with this study, is there potential for prevention, treatments? What What is uh, the main findings from this and, and what can we see moving forward? Absolutely, so one of the most relevant aspects of our study is that it represents a step forward in personalized medicine. And pretty much we're bridging the gaps between genetics brain anatomy, and mental health and neuropsychiatric conditions. So by understanding how our genes shape our brains and also influence our risk for specific conditions, we can better treat, prevent, and diagnose these strategies. All right, because there is certainly a lot of stigma against certain conditions, aren't there, would you say? Yes, I, I would say that, especially for ADHD, um, this is a condition that could be commonly or more frequently um, dismissed as a behavioral issue rather than a neurodevelopmental condition. And what our study is proving is that there's not only a biological basis to ADHD, but there's also a neurological component to this condition. All right, and with Parkinson's, tell us about that because I believe there are prevention strategies that you know people could take. Yes, absolutely. So. It, it is true that we cannot change our genetic material. And, and, and when we are born, we have a specific set of genes that are already staying with us for the rest of our lives. However, what we can do is change our lifestyle. And we can change a specific and little things such as how much sleep are we getting? What's the quality of that sleep? What does our diet look like? Are we exercising? How much and what type of exercise are we doing? All right, and the study looked at various parts of the brain, including the hippocampus, the amygdala, uh, to name a few. So, is it so? It's about the the structure and uh, and you said the size of parts of the brain. Yes. So, when we commonly think about the human brain, what we think about is this circular, oval, pink rocked organ. And that's what we call the cortex, and that's, that's the outermost portion of our brain. And what we investigated in this study is the subcortex, or what we call also the deep brain, which are all the, all the structures hidden under the cortex. And this includes also, for example, the butamen, which is well known to be associated with Parkinson's disease. And when, when brain cells in the butamen are damaged, that's when individuals start, start experiencing uh, the common symptoms of Parkinson's disease. All right, and uh, you looked at other studies, including for schizophrenia, depression, bipolar. What did you find with those conditions? Um, to different extents, we also observed associations with, with depression, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder. However, the stronger effects, at least from a genetics perspective, were observed specifically for ADHD and Parkinson's disease. All right, well, thank you so much. A fascinating report and, uh, yeah, lots to look out there. We look forward to hearing more. Thank you. Thank you.